Welcome to this issue of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I want to follow up on this a little bit. So this is going to be the cooling system for our 3040 CNC. So I kind of want to share with you guys, if you picked up a 3040 or you have a small, um, like 800 watt uh, water-cooled spindle system, uh, how to go about setting up a rather cheap and easy cooling system. Now, uh, this probably won't be a permanent system, but I, I decided it's uh, probably a good working alternative for the time being. So what I did is I went out into my local big box home store and picked up a two gallon uh, painter's bucket. And then what I did is I cut a hole in the top. And uh, you might remember I did a video on this plug, how to whip up a, a plug. This will cover up the, the excess hole, if you will. And then much like with the laser cutter, what I did is I printed up um, uh, kind of like a spigot end, which attaches here, which the water will return through. So the water gets pumped out of this hose, the water returns in here, and because of the dribbling, I can be able to hear the water pour back in. Now, I've got about two gallons of distilled water sitting off to the side. Um, one of the big reasons using the distilled water is so you don't get the iron deposits building up in the uh, uh, tubing in that. Now, the way I set up the pump, it does come with a pump, and I want to share that with you guys, because as a little surprise, it was a little bit different than the laser pumps. So, um, one of the pieces here, just to make sure I get it in frame, it's got a pressure fit coupler here uh, for a hose that's, uh, I forget the diameter of this, but it's the same size hose that came with the actual um, CNC. Now, I'm going to have this bucket probably a good six feet away from the machine um, on the floor running. So I had to do some extension hose. So I just went with some light uh, uh, PVC type hosing, flexible hosing. Uh, because this is a little bit tougher that comes with it and actually I had some more of this for another project so I just used a piece of that clipped it in there and then I 3D printed um, an adapter out of PLA out of actually rigid ink uh, PLA plus and this stuff has really worked good I've done a couple of these uh, connectors and so long as they're not under huge pressure which this won't be they actually work pretty good now what happens is this sticks into the bottom of the bucket and so we'll push, push it in the bottom of the bucket now, one of the things I do, big safety note here, I want to take this back out. This is a two-wire plug, and I want to get the other side here. And so you're basically putting, not basically, you are, when I stick this in here and I pour water in and I plug this in, there's 110 volts in this bucket. Now, this is supposed to be double insulated and stuff, but folks, do not trust it. Do not stick your hand in the bucket to see how warm the water is when you're running it. You put a thermometer in there that, that's electrically isolated, but do not stick your hands in there. One of the things that I will do for testing, I will plug it into the, uh, uh, just strip over there, but I am going to plug this into a GFI circuit or a ground fault interrupted circuit for safety's sake. So um, I wanted, I'm going to do that, and I highly suggest that is, uh, you know, and if you're going to do it too, definitely get a ground fault system. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour the water in. Now, I've got two gallons here, and this is a two-gallon bucket. And one of the things, uh, there'll probably be at least a quart or two in the hose system. So I have one bucket poured in. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the system in to prime it. Okay. Oh, sorry for bumping you. So I now have it primed, it's running, and, and one of the things I want to watch and, and do is um, see if uh, there's a leak because, as you can see, I already have a leak out of the, uh, the PLA fitting, so I'll probably have to fix that a little bit. It's not too bad. Uh, well, actually, I think it's just my, I don't have the uh, zip strip on there tight enough and it's coming back around is all, so I just need to tighten that up. Um, and you might want to make sure you push all the whoops you want to make sure you get the top in there because I just squirted the water on the workbench because I forgot to put the top back on I'm so busy talking to you guys so again live TV but you can see how that works and it's pumping into the system um, I need to get some more paper towels to clean that up so hang on a quick second all right I get some paper towels to clean that up and I know uh, Norbert Robert and Zerota Labs, you guys are probably laughing out there, but uh, it was kind of funny, wasn't it? Anyways, uh, 
uh, again, you want to be careful with that. There's 110 volts running in there, but as you can see it, so that's after about a gallon, so it didn't uh, draw down too much, so probably a quart in the, these lines, like I say, I probably have, it's going to be about six feet away, I have it a little bit closer to the machine. If I pan you guys over, you can see the machine over there, and what I'm going to do is uh, zoom you guys in on the top, and you can see the water running through the top of the spindle. Uh, because the hoses are translucent, so you want to ha uh, watch. You want to watch for leaks over there. Now I do have that all wrapped up with Teflon tape and everything on there, and tightened down before I started the water. So that's all looking pretty good. I don't see any leaks over there, uh, dripping on the uh, piece. And then if I zoom you guys back out, and then pan you back over to the bucket. You know, again, what we see is we have it running here. Now, again, as I showed in the other video, this, this will clip on here. And this will keep, you know, heavier, larger debris out of the bucket, dust and stuff out of the bucket. So that, that's pretty good. And again, I can hear it running in there. So I'm going to probably go ahead and put it in, put in another half a gallon or so. But uh, I, I think, again, you see how the system works. And, uh, you know, again, if you got a 3040 CNC machine, and you're looking at building, you know, a water cooling system. Uh, I think this is a good way to go. Now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't classify this as being for uh, heavy-duty cycles. Um, I've seen a couple other folks out there with uh, the 800 and the 12, the 800 and the 1200 watt spindles build smaller systems with uh, smaller thermal mass. Um, I think around, uh, you know, close to two gallons of water in the system should give you quite a bit of cooling at, at amb ambient room temperatures. My shop's usually around about 70 degrees or so. So anyways, if you get any questions about this, hit me up below. I'll keep you guys posted on how this is going because I want to get this CNC running and start doing some videos for you guys on it. So uh, this was a big step in getting that done. And uh, hey, if you found this interesting, if you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up. I appreciate it. And uh, don't forget the swag shop, subscribe button coming, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.